Greetings everyone and welcome. I'm your host Captain Rai and today's video comes to us courtesy of Captain Oostafish who is playing in the tier 10 Japanese wall of skill producing destroyer Shimakaze. As the battle gets underway it's Atlantic and it's domination match mode. Since Captain has spawned closest to the B cap point, the B cap point is where he's going to go initially. Now some key things to remember about the Shimikaze, especially post-patch. It has a slightly better detection range than it used to have. That's a reduction in its detection range from 5.9 kilometers just down a little bit. Not too much, but just enough to make a little bit of a difference when dealing with gunboat destroyers. Captain Oostafish has got his torpedoes reloaded and ready to go, so he fires them off into a smokescreen. Now, we know that there is an enemy destroyer sitting in the smokescreen, in spite of the fact that no enemy destroyer has actually been detected. You'll notice that destroyer basically popped into the B cap point and dropped a smokescreen. Destroyer captains that do this are potatoes. They really do not understand that if you drop a smoke screen, you're only going to attract a lot of fish, a specific kind of fish made of metal and high explosive. And Captain Oostafish is going to secure his kill and a first blood in this battle on the enemy Shimakaze with those special metal fishies. So with an enemy Shimakaze dead, that's one less wall of skill producing destroyer on the enemy team for Oostafish's team to have to contend with. However, you'll notice that there is still at least one other destroyer in the B cap point because that kill on the Shimikaze reset the B cap point, but not that much. And the enemy team still had it. Now, Friendly Grosavoy manages to open fire on the other Shimikaze there, and that is the enemy destroyer that had the remaining points for the base capture on him. And as he hits him, it resets the base. Of course, the Grosavoy opening fire has a Missouri closing in on him here. Of course, the Missouri, a very dangerous battleship to contend with for a lot of different reasons. But the biggest factor here, premium tier 9 battleship, he's got radar. And that radar reaches out to a wonderful range of 10 kilometers. So if you are in a bad position, like wide out in the open here, you could potentially find yourself at the receiving end of some very large and very angry 16-inch shells. Oostafish almost has a good torpedo solution on this Missouri as he pushes in towards the B cap point, but the Grosovay pushing into the B cap point to stop the enemy team from capturing it and to reset the cap by hitting that Shimikaze blocks the torpedoes here. Oostafish can't fire, friendly destroyer in the front. And because these aren't deep water torpedoes, he will hit him if the Grosovoy was still in front of him. Now the Grosovoy is basically running away here. The Missouri has popped his radar. Grosovoy pops a smoke screen and basically slams on his brake. This Grosovoy probably not all that familiar with the concept of what radar is and what radar does. The good news for the Grosovoy though, is that that radar will eventually run out. The bad news for him, as you can see here, he's taking a huge beating from the Missouri, from the Shimigaze, and pretty much from every enemy ship in range who can shoot at him. And of course, because he pops the smoke screen, because the Missouri popped his radar, he saw the destroyers out here. He's turned, and so all of Oostafish's torpedoes, they manage to miss. Enemy Reichelieu takes out the friendly Alabama that was pushing in there. The Missouri didn't get the kill on that, fortunately. The enemy team is down two destroyers. That leaves three destroyers on Oostafish's team. They have the destroyer advantage, of course. This Grosovoy probably not helping the situation here by continuously opening it up. But those torpedoes might help the situation if they manage to hit that Missouri, who is currently on fire. Right now, the enemy team doesn't hold any of the caps. Oostafish's team holds the only cap up at sea, but their team is down. I stand corrected. Their team is currently tied for number of ships lost. However, their team has lost more valuable ships. So the only reason that they're currently in the points lead is because they hold the C cap point. The enemy team still in the process of capping here, and they are capping the B cap point uncontested yet again. And from the looks of it, the team down at A, has 
basically been forced to retreat from the situation. Now, this is actually a very unusual situation as their team pretty much divided to go A and C, leaving just the destroyers to defend at B. Very, very unusual here. Missouri takes pot shots at Oostafish. Of course, rear turrets from the Missouri, only three shells. The dispersion from RNG, not enough to connect there, fortunately. However, Oostafish is going to remain spotted as long as he remains inside of his gun range and continues to open fire. What exactly he was aiming at here, I'm not entirely sure. I think he's taking a blind shot where he thinks the enemy Shimakaze is located. However, no such luck there. Enemy team manages to secure the A cap point, but again, they're being contested there, so no points for them. And because still Ustafish's team is the only one that has a viable cap, they are slowly gaining those points, and they are getting that points lead. So if they lose another ship, they should be able to weather the storm just a little bit. Ustafish finally going to take the initiative here, and he's going to push in to the B cap point. This is good news and bad news. It's bad news because it's going to tell that enemy Shimikaze exactly that there's a destroyer in here with him. The good news, though, that Shimikaze has less, less health than Ustafish, and Ustafish has a Grozovoy as a backup. So, as we see here, the Shimikaze popping a smokescreen can't decide if he's going to run or slam on his brake. So Ustafish has got a nice spread out there, but two of those are forward where the Shimikaze was headed, and one is reverse of the lead indicator where that Shimikaze might slam on his brakes and try to reverse too. Either way, Shimikaze's got a smoke screen out there, and this torpedo spread should cast a nice wide net. Hopefully, one of them will connect, and given how much health that guy's got, only one is going to be necessary. So there is Ustafish's second kill in the game, second torpedo hit on a destroyer, who incidentally popped a smoke screen and attracted all of those wonderful metal high explosive fishes. Grozovoit lays down a smoke screen, not necessary now because that enemy destroyer is dead, but still reasonably useful to avoid anybody who might still be lurking around, as there is still technically one destroyer on the enemy team. At this point, Ustafish's team has the destroyer advantage, and I can never stress this enough in battle. The team that gets that destroyer advantage often goes on to win the game because you have a lot of small, fast, concealed ships that can go out and they can detect those big battleship guns, where they're hiding, what islands they're hiding behind, and whether or not they're going forward or backwards. Yes, you can use your torpedo lead indicators and tell your teammates if that enemy battleship is reversing, going full ahead, or if he's just barely trying to nudge around that corner. Communication is key. Enemy team loses even more ships. They're down five ships now, and with Captain Ustafish helping capture the B cap point and C being captured, with the advantage that A is still under contention, his team is off to a fantastic points lead here. Almost 350 points ahead of the enemy team. Ustafish gets one set of torpedoes off at this enemy battleship here. Again, enemy destroyer pushing up in front, blocking his torpedoes. But as you can see, those torpedoes from the friendly destroyer, they manage to connect. So now that battleship is going to have a serious problem here as even more torpedoes come out here from Ustafish. Now, Friendly Destroyer opening up with guns. He's going to try and set a fire. This is a smart Destroyer Captain. He knows he caused flooding with his torpedoes. He wants to add insult to injury. Get those fires. And you can see there, that battleship, not having a good time of it, gets taken out by the Grozovoy. And now, Ustafisha team is really sitting pretty on the points. As they're almost 600 points ahead of the enemy here. And still, the enemy has one destroyer left. Of course, they've yet managed to lose a destroyer, so the destroyer advantage quickly waning. And there are some ships still out there that have radar. And if you're a destroyer captain, you have to keep your distance and be concerned here. The good news is one of them is a Russian cruiser, which can be effectively spotted from across the map. Now, Ustafish has to decide what to do here. 
should he push down towards A, provide assistance? As we can see, a lot of the enemy team is still concentrated down at the A camp point, and they're looking for a breakout opportunity. A lot of Ustafish's team is pushing down towards the A cap point, and as long as they're still sitting in the A cap point, they're basically preventing the enemy team from gaining points so they can get this nice fat lead. And that means at the end of a battle, if they suddenly have a rush of shit to the brains and lose a bunch of their ships, like that friendly battleship back there who just met his end, they can weather that storm quite well. Of course, with the loss of another battleship, that means the enemy team's going to gain points. And because he was the only one sitting in that cap contesting, that now also means that the enemy team is going to start gaining points from their one base. Torpedoes coming in here, slam on the brakes, clinch those butt cheeks, and dodge those torpedoes. Fortunately, they were a widespread, so Ustafish able to dodge all of those. First set of torps out at the Raishalu managed to miss. A second set there that Raishalu's probably saw the first set has likely changed his course. Remember, the Raishalu's a pretty fast maneuverable ship, so if you don't aim them right, you're not going to hit. But wait, did he manage? Yes, Ustafish did in fact manage. The Raishalu not paying attention there. So three torpedo hits there. That's the third kill for Ustafish in this battle, and that leaves the enemy team with just four. Of course, they have two cruisers, a Minotaur and a DM. They have a destroyer, which if I'm not mistaken is the Fletcher, a very, very dangerous destroyer indeed, especially late game if he's got a lot of health left. And they still have a battleship left as well. But of course, the battleship has effectively run for the border. So he and his guns are going to be completely useless. What's not useless, however, are the guns of the Minotaur and the DM, especially the Minotaur who has that heal and a smokescreen. And if you're unlucky enough, may instead of smokescreen have a radar. But as we can see, smokescreen popping up here, that's more than likely going to be the Minotaur's smoke. So Ustafish can get a little bit closer, and with any luck here, he can get some torpedoes into that smokescreen. Again, smokescreens are the best bait when you are fishing for the torpedoes. Now the Minotaur, though, does have Hydro Acoustic. So if that Minotaur is smart, he's popped his smokescreen, he's popped Hydro, and as we can see, he's starting to maneuver around in there. He is being spotted. I'm not sure if that's radar. I'm pretty sure that is radar, given where he's at. And yet another friendly ship goes down. This time, it's the Grozovoy. gets taken out by the Kerfurst, who is border-hugging. Oh, man, that's... That's actually got to be a little bit embarrassing there. So the Kurfürst takes out the Grozovoy, and that just leaves Ustafish to take on a potential lone destroyer. Unfortunately, Minotaur, a very maneuverable cruiser, manages to dodge his first set of torpedoes as he now is leaving his smokescreen, basically closing in on the friendly cruiser that's back up here. Fortunately... A torpedo does manage to connect there, but look at this. Minotaur's health recovery, even with the torpedo, he manages to start recovering health. Ustafish did cause flooding there with the torpedo, but he hit the R key, and now he's got a fire going. But again, that Minotaur's rate of recovery is ridiculous. Even with a fire burning, he's still gaining health. And now you'll notice that he's popped a smoke screen. Yes, that's right. The Minotaur's popped yet another smoke screen. So that first smoke screen now, or this second one here, may not actually be the Minotaur smoke screen. And you have to think about that. You have to seriously think about that. If you are in a destroyer, or a cruiser even, or a battleship, because if you see two smoke screens pop up like that, one is a British cruiser that you know's there, the other one has got to be the enemy destroyer so you have to be careful of torpedoes now friendly cruiser hindenburg pushing in here but look at this this hindenburg is definitely being detected so he's being spotted more than likely by the enemy destroyer the problem is that minotaur really can put the hurt out on him well the hindenburg can put hurt out back it only can do so if he can see the minotaur and of course he's firing high explosive and then Hindenburg gets taken out. Now, the Hindenburg got close enough to spot the Minotaur firing out of his smokescreen there. He got within range. 
so they were able to spot him. The Yamato no longer really in a position to shoot that Minotaur, but the Minotaur definitely in a position to shoot the Yamato, lobbing shots over that island. And again, with nobody close enough, nobody can see him. Ustafish's team has managed to lose more ships, and now they're down to Ustafish and one battleship. Specifically, Ustafish and that Yamato. And they still have to deal with the Minotaur, they still have to deal with the DM, and they still have to deal with a cruiser or a destroyer lurking about there somewhere. Fortunately, that destroyer did pop up, and he didn't have a lot of health left. Something that I see a lot of Japanese destroyer commanders refuse to do is use their guns to engage very, very low health ships, very low health cruisers. Like this cruiser, and Ustafish is going to open up with his guns. Yes, that's right, a Japanese commander, not afraid to use his guns, opens up with his guns, finishes off that Minotaur. Very dangerous cruiser, so that's going to be Ustafish's fourth kill, and there is the enemy, Fletcher. Now, the Fletcher is also very low health, so Ustafish, who's got him in gun range, is going to open up with his guns. Again, something you really don't see. Ustafish can't afford to do this because he has a lot more health than that Fletcher, and the Fletcher simply cannot return fire. So what the Fletcher has done is something smart. He's dropped off detectability by he's no longer firing, and if he's smart, he's going to close the range. But even if Ustafish had significantly less health, Ustafish only has to hit him with a few more shots to finish him off. That Fletcher is really, really low health. Now, Ustafish gets himself situated for a potential torpedo attack here, but realizes the Fletcher's moving too fast. He's going to go behind the island. The island's going to block him, so he opens up with his guns again to try and finish him off. Again, manages to connect there. The Fletcher's going to start maneuvering. The Fletcher, though, makes a vital mistake here. He opens fire. If he'd waited a few more seconds, he'd have dropped off detectability, but because he didn't, Ustafish is going to be able to connect with him. More shots out there, RNG not quite enough to finish him off. Ustafish now the sole survivor as the Yamato gets taken out. Can he connect with him? No. Doesn't manage, so that Fletcher continues to survive. <clears throat> the situation now as it falls, as the battle nears its last minute and a half, though, is it because Ustafish's team had this had these two caps for so long in spite of the enemy team having three ships and in spite of them still having a radar cruiser and that battleship who is border hugging they are way down on points and the only way the enemy team is going to win this game is if they manage to kill captain Ustafish. captain Ustafish, all he needs to do to win this game at this point realistically is run away. That's it. He's got a minute left. All he has to do is survive. His team is way up on points. Even if the Fletcher could get up and capture B, they don't have enough time to take it, and they don't have enough time to change the points disparity. So, in hindsight, what Captain Ustafish is actually doing here, turning in, going towards where that Fletcher is, especially considering he's located by somebody, a very, very gutsy maneuver. Then again, we also know that the Fletcher, very low health. But the reason why it's a gutsy maneuver, and the reason why this is an even gutsier maneuver, remember, there's still a cruiser out there somewhere. Ustafis managed to connect those shots, earning his Kraken unleashed in that battle, putting his team way up on points there. They only have 10 seconds left in the game. The question is, are they going to cap out on points, or is the clock going to run out? Either way, as long as Ustafish remains undetected, and nobody shoots him and he doesn't detonate, they win. And sure enough, there it is. 89,000 damage done in that game, mostly causing serious damage to destroyers in a Shimikaze. Five kills, devastating strike, first blood, and Kraken unleashed. And of course, what do I always say? Smoke screens are torpedo magnets, folks. If you're in a destroyer and you lay one down, don't sit in it. And if you're not spotted and you lay a smoke screen, you're a fool. Top of the team for XP earned there, 2400 base XP. Next nearest guy on his team, earning 1900 base XP. Two survivors on the enemy team, probably feeling kind of foolish. What's really scary though, the border hugging Kurfürst, top of the team on the enemy side. 
Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you like the video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can do so by sending it to my email. If you'd like to help support me in the channel, and I encourage you to do so, every dollar helps, you can become my supporter on Patreon. And if you'd like to watch me play various games live, albeit intermittently, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.